All right. Well, uh, Active Pipe community, welcome to today's Industry Insider, where you know we welcome Josh Vegan to today's webcast. And you know, today's webcast it'll be another short, sharp, and punchy session where we're going to cover off the topic of getting ready for the rebound. I think it's fair to say, you know, the last few weeks have been all about right now and keeping our heads above water through the pandemic. You know, I think. You know, we start to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel now. And we, you know, we want to theme this session around coming out of this period of uncertainty with a deeper level of thinking around, you know, opportunities that are in front of us right now. The three things that we want you to come out of this webinar with, uh, you know, one is understanding the revolution that's currently taking place in real estate right now. Uh, we want you to come out of this with some, you know, winning strategies on how to bring your pipeline forward you know, right now during this, this pandemic. And three, take the steps, you know, the steps to take to ensure you're ready and set up for success post COVID-19. Taking a look at the, the current decline in listings across Australia, and even more so in New Zealand, we've done a lot of research around how other markets are recovering. And, you know, this, win this is a window of time. You know, internally here in Active Pipe, we're calling this the ditch there is a path to recovery. And it's, it's not just about getting across the ditch. What's mostly important is that we prepare our businesses for the rebound. And what I mean by that is that we come out of this ditch with a winning strategy and a much steeper path to recovery than businesses who are not prepared. Josh, um, you know, what can I say? Uh, you've, you've broken our webinar record here today, uh, over a thousand registrations for this event. Uh, welcome and a very big thank you uh, from the Active Pipe community for joining us today. Ash, it's uh, fantastic to join you today. I know that we've got a great session. So without further ado, we'd, we'd like to jump in and to get us really focused on, you know, some of the things that we can be doing to, to significantly drive the momentum in all of our businesses. And what I'd be saying to a lot of people is that now is really the time, you know, the revolution has definitely begun and you've got to get ready for that rebound in a big way. Um, literally uh, just this morning, I've been working with a number of people, uh, one of my clients in Campbelltown, you know, they're in a position that they've done more sales than they did this time in April last year. They're on track for a record breaking month and still a few more days to go. And so I think that there is a lot of opportunity out there if people get that clear in their minds. And this is really the, the big converse conversations that we will see a really significant spike in volume. It won't necessarily be in sale prices, but definitely in volume over the course of this next little bit. And the reason is that there's a lot of optimism everywhere that I go, certainly you know, post the flattening of the curve. And you can feel that in New Zealand with the fantastic news yesterday of the advice about uh, private appointments being able to be done from Tuesday onwards next week. And certainly we saw that in Victoria here in Australia, you know, with private appointments being allowed again directly after the Easter break. And what we will see is that now is absolutely the best time to be striking. And there are some pretty big trends that we need to get ahead of. And as a part of that, there are some headwinds ahead and we need to use that fear as the driver. And what I've been talking to a lot of people about is this whole conversation is to say that Guys, what you need to understand right now is, is that literally as this optimism comes in in the course of the next four to six weeks, we will start to see some storm clouds form. There'll be a lot of news about the economic damage that this has done to the global economy. And off the back of that, that will really start to put a little bit of downward pressure on. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if you're thinking about selling, whether or not it be today or over the course of the next 12 months, my advice would absolutely be to go now. And the reason for that is that we've got to go whilst we've still got optimism. And no one knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but literally all the lead indicators are indicating to some pretty significant storm clouds ahead. So if you are a seller and you're making the decision to transact a piece of real estate, the course is now rather than waiting over the course of the next 12 months. As a, as a part of that, we need to play as though these conditions are going to be around for the next six months. And I think it's a really important thing for an agent that you need to be very clear about not only good quality private appointments, but also in addition to that, about making sure that you're in the position of getting as many market appraisals and listing appointments as possible. Uh, what we are seeing, particularly here in Australia, is a lot of buyer inquiry. Over the course of the last 24, 48, 72 hours, we've had clients reporting um, on the lower North Shore here in Sydney, over 1,100 new buyer inquiries in the course of that three days. A 50% increase in buyer inquiry in the course of the last week. So although that was definitely our focus two weeks ago at the time of recording, certainly here in Australia, there is a big focus to the shift to be, able to, to be able to get stock for literally May and June right now and to be really working through on those pipelines. As a part of that, I'm seeing that there are two agents that are really emerging in this economy. There are those that are in the slow lane 
or there are those that are in the fast lane on the freeway to success. And they're being very, very clear about the actions, about what they're undertaking and how they're using their systems to be able to engage consumers in a much more dynamic way. You know, at the end of the day, let's have a quick look at the revolution of real estate about what's happened, you know, just in the short period over the course of the last four weeks. We've seen a live streaming of virtual open for inspections. We've seen online auctions. We've seen the digital signing of agency agreements, the digital signing of contracts, Zoom training sessions. Ash, I never thought I'd be doing these uh, as much as I am. Uh, literally, this is my entire life right now. Zoom sales meetings happening across businesses, Zoom vendor meetings, virtual appraisals, virtual listing appointments, the rise of private appointments, buyer appointments, market appraisals and listing appointments being the dominant lead source. And finally, I'm getting agents to where I've always wanted them to at a minimum of 15 appointments a week. And now I'm seeing people at 40 and 45 appointments a week, you know, with the uh, restriction on open for inspections to really moving into that private appointment market as New Zealand will come Tuesday. There's been a rapid increase in online activity and that's now driving a lot of the offline activity for agents. Um, video tours, 3D floor plans, just to name a few. And literally we would never have tried to get that amount of change to happen in an organization over the course of a year or two, let alone the course of 28 days. And really what this is important to understand is that you've had a ton of technology that's coming at you and now is the opportunity to really get back into business. And this is the idea about, you know, what is online and what is offline and where's the balance between those two. And what I'll be saying to you is, is that the secret is about understanding what the problem is that you are solving for the customer because the customer will be out there searching for the solution, certainly in the online environment before they move to the offline environment. And this is a really important part of com the conversation. Uh, this is why I'm so confident about the market and so confident about the increase in volume going forward, counter to some of the major estate agency firms, because I see that there are 11 different customer types that we get to work with on a regular and consistent basis. And Ash, if you've still got some humor about you, then I know that these things will be um, very clear because the first thing is, Will there be more growing families out of the pandemic? You betcha. There's going to be a lot of babies born in the course of the next eight to nine months. I'm not sure why, but certainly uh, when people are in a position that they're at home with their partner for 28 days straight, there's probably only a couple of solutions and growing family is potentially one of those. The second one, there will be some deceased estates, hopefully not because you're at home with your partner, but certainly there is the natural death rate. There'll be a slight increase in that. The third one, there will be a ton of divorces. I think that there's a lot of people right now that are re-evaluating not only their home life, they're re-evaluating their work life and they're also re-evaluating their relationships. And that will lead into investors that will want to divest assets. There will also be investors that will be in a position that they'll be looking to buy additional assets inside of their asset pool. And you know, that's the great conversation with you know Warren Buffett. He always says, if someone's prepared to sell me an asset for well below its market value, then I'm prepared to pick it up. And we will see that happen. There is also going to be developers that will be looking to purchase because now is a great time to own an asset and to be starting to get the development up. So by the time it is completed, then you can be in a position that you'll be able to sell it as the market recovers. There's certainly going to be a lot of job relocations. We saw that here in Australia with the announcement potential of Virgin Australia moving potentially from Brisbane as New South Wales or Victoria tries to lure them. That's potentially a relocation of 5,000 jobs. Now, bankruptcy and financial pressure will certainly come on. Uh, nursing homes, natural part of life, uh, see your tree change. You know, people making the decision to move away from bigger city environments, uh, back to more coastal or regional areas where they can have a great quality of life and be able to still work in some of their current positions as this has really forced every organisation to really um, get on to that uh, online environment to allow people to be able to work from home. Uh, aspirational sellers will be a massive part of what we see here. But also to aspirational buyers, there are plenty of people that have got businesses that are doing very well in this. Um, plenty of people that don't, but there's um, anyone who's in the chemist line, who's in a position that they're producing hand sanitizer out of their home brewery or out of the brewery at the, at the local um, shop around the corner. There's plenty of chances there. And also to those people that are downsizing because the kids have left home. What's really important to remember is, is that although a lot of people being focused on the pandemic, I'm focusing on the situations that are underlying that are the core, the core principles of why people actually make the decision to move. And as a part of that, I think that you can agree that out of those 11, at least eight, if not nine of those different customer types are actually in a position that they will be making some sort of form of a move in this next little bit. And really what our conversation is to do here is to say, guys, this is amazing for what it will do for the real estate industry. This re-evaluation of where we're at, this re-evaluation of what's happening inside of society will be one of the biggest drivers that we've got going forward. Let's have a quick look about the buy work in the online and the offline world. Uh, certainly uh, in New Zealand and certainly in Australia, we have been really dialing up the usage of online. 
you know, people that have been subscribing to receive our emails, those people that have been opening those emails, clicking on those emails, engaging with the content that is inside of those emails from video to forwarding it to friends and family, you know, downloading copies of uh, pest inspections, building inspections, contracts, leaky home reports in New Zealand, those that have been attending online auctions and virtual tours. Um, also, in addition to that, those that we've retargeted on social and using our digital amplification tools to tell us what the consumers are doing online. So now we can move into the offline environment to identify who the people are that we should literally be getting to an appointment. And I just think that this is a really important point, the ability to be able to pull the report on what people are doing in the online world so that we know who the people are that actually want to do a transaction to then move that through into the offline world. And this is going to be very significant for agents because your ability to know who is next is going to be massively important. We need to mitigate risk, but at the same time too, we need to be getting plenty of appointments with buyers that are ready to do a transaction. There's people that will be moving into second appointments. So second appointments will move into offers. I know there's a number of properties that have been sold in New Zealand subject to a physical viewing of the home which no doubt will be happening on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. And here in Australia, the conversation, those that have been registered, those that are bidding and the need to buy by a certain date, or certainly those people that have already sold that are in a position that they need to buy. This is how you have the most refined list of buyers in the marketplace who are ready to do a transaction today. And that is a really key skill for an agent to know the difference between all the people that are sitting inside of that customer base, because I believe that database is a dirty word, to then identify the people that are actually ready to go and do a transaction. As a part of that, we need to understand that there are trigger events that drive activity. And those trigger events are those people that book second appointments, those people who book private appointments, requested copies of contracts, made offers, attended online auctions and bid, need to buy by certain dates or it's even sold last weekend. Those trigger events move people from the general buying pool into that buyer hit list. And that buyer hit list is massively critical as a part of this process. The reality of it is, is that what a great agent will be doing is that they're really going to be focusing on the problem that they solve for the client. So what's the reason why someone is moving? And then in addition to that, further digging down into understanding why that driver is actually happening and how COVID-19 is actually forcing people to make decisions that they've been putting off for quite some time. In addition to that, that will then give you clarity of timeline. And we know that the buyer that will pay the most is the one that is ultimately the most urgent. And so what we need to be doing is we need to be thinking about how soon before they need to do something. When did they want to be there by? And then considering that, the destinations, what locations they're considering and how much they would actually like to go and spend. So what a great agent is doing at this point is that they're using a chart like this. And this is the idea. What is the name of the client? Josh Fegan is an example. Where is he living in Smith Street? What's his problem? He's got a job relocation. When does he need to be there by? It's in June. Where is he moving to? He's moving to Melbourne. What's his price point expectation? 1.45 million, three bedroom, two bath, two car. And now our question is, is that what can we do to actually bring this pipeline forward? So is the job relocation set or could it happen earlier? You know, what does that look like as a part of the conversation? Would they sell today with a long settlement in play? Would they sell today with the ability to be able to lease back the property? Would they sell today at a record price? And maybe you have some temporary accommodation in the meantime before they move down to Melbourne. So. These, this is what great agents are doing, is they're learning how to go and work that pipeline. This is a, a really important conversation because we go to talk about what we call the digital intent of the customer. And to me, I think that the biggest one here is that Amazon changed the world and it allowed us to get more targeted content. So you would go online and you'd have a look at a book to go and read and you'd search for that book on Amazon. And you'd see it, but you didn't purchase it. And two or three days later, what would actually happen is that you would get the email about that book saying that it's now on special. And so what would actually happen is that they would target content directly to you as an individual. And what we're seeing in the evolution of the world is, is that targeted content is the thing that really makes the difference. And when a lot of people call themselves marketers, the reality of it is that they don't understand marketing at all. If you go and have a look at the Porsche 911 on the Porsche website, there is a video for Porsche that actually goes for 31 minutes. Now here's the interesting thing, who would watch a 31 minute video? The person who's about to spend $350,000 on, on a Porsche 911. So as a part of that, what marketing is there to do is just to understand that it's not for the masses, it is ultimately for those people that are ready to get in and to do the transaction, to learn about the product, to learn about the service and really make that happen. Now the secret is, is that you know Google, Siri, Alexa, all of these people, they already know what you're thinking about because they've been hearing what you've been talking about as a part of that conversation. 
And ultimately they say that, you know, Facebook can tell you about 90 days before you break up with your partner. Uh, they can also tell you 90 days ahead of who you're going to be dating into the future based on your interactions, not only in comments, but also in shares and likes and all of those things. Now, you can say that that's a pretty scary world or you can move into 2020 plus and understand that this is what is actually happening inside of the real estate industry as well. It's actually time for us as real estate agents to reimagine what it is that we do in email and really focus on intent. So a lot of people would realize that the major real estate websites, um, certainly here in Australia, move to what we go and call reveals. So how many people would reveal the phone number? How many people would reveal the surname? How many of them would reveal the recent sales as you, soon as you put the mouse click across that particular section of the website? And then they would sell that to us as real estate agents about how many reveals that we've had. What we're actually seeing there is a form of digital intent and understanding what actually happens. So what I do when I go to work with people is I get them to think about how their business is built. And the foundational pillars of a business is a personal network, all the people that you already know. That then leads into buy work. You know, the number of buyers that we're meeting is significantly changing without doing open homes and now moving into private appointments, how we harness that inquiry. And what we're doing with that in terms of the follow-up emails that they then get is critical. What happens after that is that then we've got our past clients and what can we do to really automate that? And I think that everyone in the industry could be very clear that I've not yet seen someone who really nails the past client strategy super well. Then there's also to the social proof. Every single time we get a listing or a sale, who are the people that we already know in and around that particular property that should be you know, aware of that particular listing or sale as it happens? There's our landlords and thinking about what we go to do to go and service those people. And then off the back of that, then we've got the community. Now, literally, that is a session in its own to understand what it is that you're doing in each of those areas. But loosely, we would wrap around something we'd go and call a customer experience. Now, in the old days, we would say, okay, great. Well, what we're supposed to do with the past client is ring them for an annual checkup or an anniversary, as the industry had called it. What we're supposed to do with buyers is call them back after an appointment and see if they want to buy. Ring them back 10 days later and again, ring them when the property has actually been sold. But our new thinking is, is that to get really clear about how you're using email as a very powerful tool at the marketing level. And this might be that your personal network receives a monthly wrap. And this is building a unique customer journeys where you might see that there's an email that goes out once a month. It's a monthly wrap of what's happening in real estate. And you might send that to all the people that are inside of your personal network. Now, for your buyers, you need to make a decision on the type of email that you're going to send. There's two very distinct choices here. One is the email that is a viral email. Every single time we list or sell a property that's similar to the one that they're looking to purchase, the sales are relevant because it gives them an idea about pricing. The ones that are available for market are obviously relevant for them to move into the state of purchasing. And then it might be a weekly wrap, which is a bit of a summary on the key things that have happened and might, might include some additional content, which I'll show you in just a moment. But what people aren't realizing is the power of automation here. And there's some great things that sit inside of the database called a trigger around the actual settlement date itself. And what can actually happen now using tools is that you can actually send out an annual checkup email to all of those people and have them click on a link and automatically book that into a calendar. That technology is here, it is available and it's sitting uh, ready for people to go and do something with it. But also too, you can actually have it set so that just as that and just sold emails come directly towards those past clients. And what has really amazed me here is that people are not thinking about these categories. There's also two landlords first. What we're seeing very progressive companies do is start getting people to subscribe as a landlord so that they can receive an email about investment properties that could suit their requirements. And the content is fully tailored towards the landlord around rental returns, capital growth expectations, you know, future development potential, you know, so that landlords can see properties in a completely different way. What that then leads into is just listed and just sold based emails to landlords about where their investment properties are to encourage them potentially in the purchase of what it is that they're doing. So when I reimagine emails, the way that I think about it in the future is I reimagine based on customer bases and how can we align content to the specific customers that we've already got sitting inside of our customer base. And if we can do that seriously well, that's where I think that we're going to fundamentally go and change the game. Now, as a part of that, what I do see with people is this whole view about what an email actually looks like. And I think that, you know, this is kind of an interesting conversation. What normally happens, unfortunately, is, is that real estate agents get given a template and follow the template for the rest of their entire career. Now, if you have a look at Woolworths or Coles or New World over in New Zealand, I'm pretty sure, or Countdown, they just don't send you an email with a list of every single thing that's available in the store. But for some reason in Australia and in New Zealand, 
from all the agency databases that I'm on, what we tend to do is we send out a list of all the properties that are going to auction, all the properties that are currently open, a list of all the properties that we still can't sell, a list of all the case studies of properties that we have sold, together with a list of all the other things that we literally just don't know what to do with. And I think that the problem with that is, is that if you put it at the bottom of the email footer, call me if you get to this point, I'll give you 10 grand. We all know that the consumer's not scrolling that deep. And so this is about reimagining what is possible. And this is the perfect time to refresh and to update the template. So for me, I really love the idea of a feature market update video each week, just for one or two minutes, which is talking about what's happening inside of your marketplace. I love a feature property, you know, some sort of unique property that is literally the one that's driving. It's like the specials that they have at the supermarket, you know, strawberries on sale for $1.99. As a part of that, I also love the concept of off market. And this is about showing people uh, properties that they can't yet get access to on the major real estate portals. And this has been a really significant trend inside of the real estate industry. What I then like is some good navigational, navigational elements like virtual opens, for example, uh, also to navigating to online auctions, uh, new listings that are available, and also to find out what my home is worth and update if they're not seeing what they want. And so I want this in a, in a much smaller collapsible menu you know, in that top right hand corner that just allows people to click on each of those. And what we can do is we can track the clicks based on which button they're clicking on. And when we have a look at that, that can tell us different things about the intent of the customer. Now in working you know, uh, in, a, in, in a strategic advisory role with a lot of people about what they're doing in emails, I then say to them, well, now is the time to start producing what I call life event guides. So if you're in a position that you've got a growing family, that you're an investor, that you're a developer, that you're looking to make an aspirational purchase, that you're looking for a see or tree change, that you've got a job relocation, a separation, downsizing because of the kids, you're moving to assisted care, you're selling an estate, or you want to relieve financial pressure. Um, what that can happen there is that that can allow them to just click on any of those particular links. And when they click on that link, that can then tell us more about the intent of the customer. And the benefit of that is that now we actually know that this particular person is looking to do this particular thing. And so the secret is about how you actually put that into an email. So here's a very sample one, a very quick one that we brought up and we said, okay, we've got the details about the agent. I'm not sure why we all need to have our photos on there, but that is a part of the template that's available. Secondary about that, then we've got the off market property that's available as well, where we can show the details around that. The virtual inspections, virtual auctions, the feature property that we might have for this particular week. And then if they're looking for more, they can view all of the listings and also to some content about for those that might be downsizing. So I think that the secret is, is that you can build out really good quality emails and literally the lesson here is about making sure that you go and reimagine what that email looks like. And what I'm really driving for is that what are people clicking on and what am I doing as an individual agent as opposed to sending the same template week in, week out. Now working with your director and certainly your head of marketing, one of the key things is, is that for the bigger corporates, they certainly will be reimagining some of their templates and really thinking about how they want to have control around that. Others will be in a position that they're a little bit more flexible. Others will be more rigid. But what is important is, is to start thinking, what is the content that literally people will really want to go and see? Now, if you're going to be a great agent, we know that call lists are going to be massively important. And to really get ahead of this curve, what I'm saying is that anniversaries now, fantastic. If we could combine that with the annual checkup email that comes, you know, directly from your email system, that would be awesome. Uh, every single market appraisal that you've ever done inside of your career. Combining that with um, all of the seller buyers, and this is an interesting one. You know, one of my clients this week has done 29 buyer appointments so far. And as a part of that, I asked him a very simple question. How many of them are in a position that they need to sell before they can buy or will sell once they've bought? And he didn't know the answer to that. So if you're going to go out there meeting buyers, there's two very simple questions. Number one, have you bought locally before? And two, what are your plans if you're existing when you buy the next one? And these simple little questions will really help you to identify more future sellers and bring that pipeline forward. Uh, this is when you make or break your personal brand. And now is absolutely the time to not just set and forget the marketing. And I, I want to say this to a lot of people. The daily email has been a very significant driver in our business. And, you know, people say, look, should I go and spend all my time on social? Well, you can. But I know that if I put up a great piece of content, like my Quick Question Tuesdays, I've about 11,000 people following me. About 1,100 people week in, week out will view that, which tells me I have about a 10% conversion rate. When I come over into my daily email, I send that out to maybe 11,000 people as well, finding how the numbers work. And about three and a half to 4,000 people will actually view that. 
So from that point of view, we have a 35% conversion rate. So I'm in a position that I see it's three and a half times more powerful than what's actually happening in the social environment. And it doesn't cost me to actually send those emails as it would cost me to advertise and continue to market inside of the social environment. So here is your toolkit as a great agent going forward. There's gonna be case studies, massively important in really building a great business, giving people confidence. And some of those case studies may well make it into one of your content blocks inside of your email. We need to be relaunching properties that have not sold, that have been listed pre-Easter or pre-COVID-19. They need to be repriced and remarketed and re-pitched to the marketplace. There's a lot of off-market, a lot of conversation about that inside of the industry. Some agencies are very full on about using forthcoming auction and then auctioning the property when they get some buyer interest on the property. And as agents, we need to be in a position that we're really negotiating quite quickly and clearly around flexible terms with buyers where appropriate, smaller deposits, longer settlements, even lockdown terms around penalty interest and encouraging people to make offers because no offer actually equals no decision. And really understanding that negotiation leverage comes by understanding the intent of the customer. If they're coming back to see the home, if they keep on clicking it, then let's go and reserve that property to them again next time that they receive an email from us to see how clear that intent is so we know exactly what to do with the client. And obviously all the marketing payment options are massively important to get vendor commitment. If we look to the future, you know, life after COVID-19, there's a couple of key things that I think is really important here. And the first one is that content is king again. This is the rise of off market and certainly the rise of landlords first. You know, no one wanted to be on your viral at emails if you are you know, just sending limited things or the things that they could already get off the major real estate portal emails. But now that we're sending off market properties and certainly landlords first and specific content around what it is that we're doing, we're fundamentally changed the game. Uh, we will love human connection again. I can tell you the moment that we can hug someone, the moment that we can go to a restaurant, you know, that will make us super happy happy as a part of that. Uh, socialises will socialise more than there's ever, be, ever before. We won't all become introverts, I can guarantee you that. And we will use technology to really scale the human touch. Now, I love this as a great quote, and I know that there's a couple of questions here, Ash, but you've just got to be so good that they can't ignore you. And I think that where the opportunity is in business today is to make sure that you are improving everything that you can do um, inside of your existing tools and engagement of those tools to actually make sure that we get as best result that we can on behalf of our customers. Awesome, Josh. Thanks very much for your time, mate. That was that was an awesome session. And Josh, I know we're, we're really looking forward to being a part of your, your uh, unmissable event on, on Friday the, thirst, the 1st of May. Uh, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so what we decided to do is we just wanted an initiative to try to bring some of the best agents that we could uh, and effectively, we brought 10 of the best across Australia and New Zealand just to have a really you know, powerful conversation for 10 minutes each on what they're doing to reimagine and to renew their businesses. And so uh, Friday, the 1st of May, uh, 9 o'clock start uh, um, in Australia and 11 a.m. start in New Zealand, uh, available on our website, joshvegan.com.au forward slash UE for Unmissable Event. And we're very proud to have uh, Active Pipe on there uh, to be helping us to bring that initiative to the industry. Sure, no worries. Hey, look, a couple of questions have come through. We, we've got quite a few coming in now. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll just circle back post the webinar, um, just seeing if there's a couple that we can answer right now. Can we please have a recording of the video? Yes, all attendees will receive a uh, access to to the video. Uh, it has been recorded, so that, that's for sure. And a few people had connection issues as well. Uh, okay, there is a so question around marketing off market properties. Um, from yeah, Noreen. Uh, Noreen, uh, if the question is around uh, marketing off-market properties in Active Pipe, yes, that functionality is available. Uh, contact our success team at success at activepipe.com. The, the email that Josh just went through in his presentation was literally built in two minutes in our platform. So those guys, will, the, the team at the, the success team will, will step you through how that works. Are there any other there's webinars another, that we can have access to? That was another one. Yeah, um, there's another one Josh, too from Alice about active pipe questions. You know, can we see someone has forwarded an email? Yeah, sure. Uh, right now, the current functionality in active pipe, you'd identify that by seeing multiple opens. We are looking at how we can build that technology, that functionality into our technology. Um, there is a way to do it around, you know, building that into the, the view online link where you can, you know, share the, email from there as a consumer. 
But what we're trying to do is be a little bit smarter around how we identify that. So, you know, if we pick up another device in a different IP, open that email, uh, that's how we'll identify that it's being forwarded. So we, we definitely are working on enhancing that technology. We've got a great question here as well from Michael, why off-market properties are becoming more important. Literally, that's for consumers that are afraid about going to market and spending money on marketing in case there's another lockdown. You know, similar to what we've seen over in Singapore, where there has been another lockdown that has been required, that if vendors are a little bit worried about going to market, off market is a perfect opportunity to have it photographed, to have it marketed, to have it available, to show a couple of buyers through, and then it still allows you to be able to do a transaction. And once they've seen that you, you do great actions, then what you'll then see, then there's a great opportunity to then list to take it to market. So that is about, you know, then hitting the button on the additional marketing and putting it on the major portals to do that. So. There is certainly uh, some very proactive companies in this space that are doing a lot of things about having an off-market and on-market and certainly making sure as a part of their email that they have that off-market section. And Asher, I think that that's a really important point that hopefully has landed for a lot of agents today is that now's the time to have a chat with your marketing team, to talk with your directors, to talk with your brand ambassadors and to really get clear about what you can and can't do and what sort of functionality they want to turn on. Because I know that the capabilities to build better quality custom journeys is massively important. And, you know, one of the big things that I was thinking about is that what emails do you send to what different groups of people that are sitting inside of our database? Whereas I think that traditionally what we have done as an industry is maybe created one email and sent it to everyone. And now it's actually the time to, you know, pull that back out and to make sure the content that we're sending is highly relevant at this particular process in time. Yeah. Sure. Got it. I, I can see a question there around, uh, can we get some help from ActivePipe uh, to help design the email template? Absolutely. Again, success at activepipe.com. Just flick those guys an email and uh, Henry uh, Osborne and the team will get on top of that for you. Um, I do have another one there around, you know, how many buyers should agents be working with at any one time coming from Kane? It's a there? great one. Yeah, I think that the big conversation is, is that on any campaign, you're probably going to meet two to three buyers that are going to move forward in, in really wanting to make an offer or bid on that particular property. But you might meet 10, 20, 30 people that might inquire. So this is the big difference that I was getting to about those people that are doing online activities versus those that are doing offline. And if you want to talk about yep. the, uh, the buyers and the buyer hit list, it's really those people that have done the offline activities that are really the ones that are going to be the extra service, the extra calls over and above what you're sending them in terms of the digital environment. I know there's another question here too. Lots of vendors at this stage don't want to pay for marketing. What tools can be used to encourage them to get the fear out of the vendors? Well, I think that the secret is, you know, it's like listing a property that's been expired listing with another agent. Yeah, they really want to see action. And I think that the secret is, you need to get photographs if you want to be selling to an out of area buyer. You need to make sure that it's going to be positioned correctly on your website. You need to have the tools available. And literally, if you don't have those tools, then you can't do anything. So you can then go on to upsell the marketing for the additionals for portals and newspaper and all of those additional things. But they really do want to go and see it. And a lot of it is about the skill base. Uh, interesting enough, we're seeing a very significant trend with agents getting very good about let's at least get it onto the market to bank up the buyer inquiry, which has been very popular in New Zealand over the last four weeks, to get that buyer inquiry ready for the moment they're allowed to do private appointments. And I can tell you, there'll be a lot of very tired real estate agents in New Zealand come Thursday night next week, I think, after doing all those private appointments on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So it really is some skills. Um, also showing people are most popular in terms of the large, medium and small in your marketing campaigns. And here is the medium one that is the most popular and that, you know, is a part of that conversation. I know there's another conversation there from Terry. What's the best way to encourage the buyer to proceed making an offer without seeing the property because the tenant refuses access? Well, I think that's a really important conversation that you know tenants certainly do have rights and, and during the, the coast of a health epidemic, it is important to make sure that we're looking after them. Literally, that's really important from a buyer's perspective. If they want to touch and feel the asset, there's not much that we can do. The tenant may allow you to be able to do a video tour of the property or well, the tenant might even be able to walk through the property, you know, just on a Zoom meeting or something similar like this, just to allow people to be able to see the actual physical asset itself. But literally, if they want to physically inspect it, you will probably need to wait until that tenant has moved out. And there's obviously plenty of restrictions around any evictions and things in various countries. So you will need to wait until it is the appropriate time to do it. So I think what is important, do what's in the best interest of your owner and get their instructions on how they'd like to see things handled. And it might be that you know, tenanted properties are not the things to be taken to market at this particular point in time. But again, that can change very, very quickly. So will action can still be popular in New Zealand? Uh, absolutely, I think that there won't be any issues with that. Um, what I'm seeing is, is that 
Uh, people love auction because they can sell it in a shorter period of time. It gives immediate focus from the buyers. And also in addition, that it allows your owner to be able to have uh, a, an unconditional contract. And that's been one of the biggest drivers here in Sydney. We have seen Peter Chauncey, who will be at the Unmissable event, say that every single thing that he's listing right now, he's listing as an auction. And he has a 100% confirmation that he believes that they will all be sold well prior to the auction day. So really it's about short days on market right now to make sure that we're protecting price and maximising the sales result for our clients and mitigating risk. So Ash, um, that's been one hell of a 30 minutes, eh? Yeah, thanks, Josh, mate. Well, you know, Josh, once again, on behalf of the Active Pipe community, I'd, I'd like to thank you for your time today. And I'm sure it's been a real eye-opener for the people who have attended. Uh, it, it's just awesome to see, you know, the, the much needed opportunities that will come out of this pandemic for our industry. And, you know, to the active pipe community that have attended today, uh, you, all, you, know, you know, I said earlier, over a thousand people registered for this event. Um, I just want to thank you for taking the time to get involved here today. It really was a session to be just more about you than, than about active pipe. And if you've got any questions or need help setting up campaigns in the platform, that reflects some of the winning strategies that, that Josh has demonstrated and mentioned here today. You know, it literally took a few minutes to set up that campaign that you saw earlier. Uh, so please get in touch with the success team at success at activepipe.com to help get that through for you. And until next time, um, thanks again, Josh, and, and goodbye. Thanks so much, team. We'll see you soon.